So once we're done with the creation of our project, first save the record. And the next task is to create the data model. The data model contains the entity types and like association entity set, etc. So based on requirement, we have to define single or multiple entity types. So here in this example, in data model, for same creating a first entity types. So for creation of entity types, we have three options. Option one, by right click on this data model, create entity type. This completely manual process, adding field one by one. Option number two is instead of create, go to import and select the DDIC structure as we already have one table Z O V B A K or any structure so we can add the flam, uh, fields directly from that structure. The option three is we can add the fields from the RFC, BAP, etc. So here first we'll see first two options that is creation of manual and then importing of DDIC. This I will cover when we'll create the old data with RFC BAPI. So for creating the interior type, go to data model, right click, create interior type. Interior type is collection of fields. So it gives a meaningful name here. So here first I'm giving as a SO header M, M for manual. So interior types, we can refer as the work area, which can hold a single record. And here we can see the create related entity set option. The entity sets acts as an internal table with this line type. So by default system will assign some name, press enter. So here we can see the entity type is created. This we can refer as the SC11 structure name. Now inside this structure, we have to add our fields. For adding our fields, double click on the properties and here we have to add one by one field as per our requirement because here I'm first showing with the manual option. So to adding a field, click on append record. So first field I'm giving here as the VBELN and we have to mark as a key field based on our requirement whether it's a single key field or multiple key field. And next we have to give data type whether it is a string, dead, etc. as we use data element in the SA element. The same way, we have to give the data type. So here I'm going with the string. To add the next field, again click on new record. Add the second field as ER dead. Now this is not my key field, so I'm not selecting this checkbox. Select data type as dead and time. So this is the way to create the fields manually, but this is time consuming because suppose we have a 10 to 20 fields. So creating one by one will take a lot of time and mostly we generally work with the structure and table. So that's why in rare case, we go, we go with this option. Suppose we don't have any structure and if you want to add the field from different structure, okay, then in that case only we create the manual option. So this is option number one. Now option two is, Right click, go to import. This I am to going to use for my practice. And here select DDIC structure. Again, give the name here. So this time I am giving as SO header. Indeed type. We can see two options here. One is indeed type and second is complex type. The complex type we use when we have the nested structure. Like some fields inside that one more structure that we'll see in the upcoming session. So as of now, we are going with the entity types. And here by default, the shape was selected to create default entity set. Now, as I selected the DDIC structure, import from DDIC structure. So here we have to give the name. So I'm going to select from zero VPAK table. Click on next. Select all the fields which we want to add into our system. To select all, just click here. I don't want mandate field, so I'm removing the mandate from here. Click on next button. So system will create automatically all those fields. Now here you can, you can observe those are the adapt name. 
and do all the front end system name with a data type. And these become case sensitive. So if you want to change to capital letters, we can do from here. And we have to mark one field as a key field. So I'm selecting this as a key field that is VBELN. This will be used by the front end system and the back end system will use this VBLN field. Click on finish. Double click on SO header. Double click on properties. So we can see the fields are created. As I explained, this is a case sensitive. We'll understand what is this case sensitive means. Now, if you see here, we just selected the field from data dictionary. System has automatically selected all the fields with their respective type, whether it's a string, time, decimal, etc. with their size, the label, the Excel document created on, etc. and the IBAT field name. So it is better, it's always good to create the entity types with the structure if it is possible. If not possible, then definitely we have to create manually. So once we create the entity types, first click on save. Now, after cell, suppose we want to create two, three entity types. So first create all the entity types like here, SO header, M, item, etc. After creating all the entity types, we have to create the generate runtime objects. So click here, generate runtime objects. So when we click on generate runtime objects, the system by default creating some default classes in the backend system, which I explained in the theory session. Here the base class is that is MPC, model provider class. And by inheriting this base class system generated the MPC extension class. Similarly, we have the DPC class that is the data provider class and the data provider extension class. And this is service name which will be generated. So better don't change any name, just keep that as it is. So system will generate so many objects. Once we click on the generate runtime objects, the MPC class will give the model detail, the model which we have created, like this entity type SO header, SO header M, what are the fields inside this structure, that all we can access through the MPC class. And if you want to add any additional fields Apart from this, then we have to add that into the extension class. So those are generated automatically. And suppose after generating the runtime objects, if you're doing any modification in the data model, then again, we have to generate the runtime objects. Whenever we do any modification in the data model site, we have to generate the runtime, of, uh, runtime objects. The system will regenerate all the classes again based on the new model which is designed. So after creating the entity types, click save and then click on runtime objects. So as soon as we click on the continue button, system will ask for package or local objects. So once we generate the runtime objects from this button, so here we can see system has created the runtime artifacts different classes and the service maintenance also and here in the service implementation you can see for both entity types as we have created two entity types one is for SO header M one is this SO header so he, here in the service implementation you can see inside each entity type we have some methods which is called a crude method like current delete get etc so for every entity set we have to implement those option, those method to access the data. So this is about creating the data model and generating the runtime objects. So after this, how to register service and how to maintain service, we'll see in the next session.